Hi friends, thank you for joining us in another Monday meditation. This is a weekly series where we engage and explore in different and a variety of spiritual practices. The hope of this series is to show you that there is no one right way to encounter God, to connect with the Holy Spirit, uh, to be transformed by the love of Jesus. So however you find yourself uh, connecting to something holy, latch on to that. Run with that momentum. And where you find yourself challenged by a practice, listen to that. Practice it some more. God may be speaking to you there as well. Today's spiritual practice is um, different. It's actually not one that we're able to do on a video. So I'm just going to explain it to you and then um, invite you to practice this on your own. This is called apophatic prayer. Uh, apophatic is a Greek word that just means a negation, a lack of. Um, if we think about this uh, on the opposite uh, end of the spectrum, we might think about praying um, with icons or images, or even uh, Lectio Divina, where we're reflecting on words and phrases. Um, these images, these, these things that we think about are positive, as in they're adding to our reflection and our prayer. Not that they're good or bad, but, but adding to. So. Um, apophatic, this negation, uh, is a lack of image, a lack of word. And it really centers us in the mystery of God, in the unknown way that God reaches out to us. So how apophatic prayer works is um, I invite you to find a word, a holy word for you. This could be a word that you have encountered in scripture or something that is just meaningful to your lived story or experience. And that word is going to be your, your anchor in apophatic prayer. Um, so you're gonna wanna be able to get, get comfortable, uh, to, to sit if you can, get in a seated position. Not too comfortable that you wanna fall asleep but um, one where you can really just relax and focus on your breath. And you're going to say that word. This is different than like a Jesus prayer or a breath prayer where you kind of say the word over and over again. In apophatic prayer, you want to say the word to center yourself and then let your mind go. The hope of this is that at some point you would begin to experience the, the, the unknownness of God, the nothingness, the negation. Um, but that's not exactly how our brains work, is it? We get distracted. You might start thinking of the grocery list or the things you have to do for work the next day or other things that swirl in our minds. When you feel yourself going down that other path, repeat your word to anchor you back to that, that holiness, that um, deep attunement to the spirit. But don't think of that as bad. The goal of this is to not place moral judgment on when we become distracted. We will always become distracted, we are humans. And in apophatic prayer, when we can surrender to God, to let go of that control and that certainty of the, um, of the absolute, of what we know about God, God will come in and meet us and remind us that we are loved, that God is with us. So when you are quiet and still and you have your word, spend a fair amount of time, 20 to 30 minutes if you can, um, and just 
let God find you. The tendency is to want to play music or um, to have something else to fill the void. But in apophatic prayer, that, that silence, that eerie, uncomfortable nothingness, that is the heartbeat of this prayer practice, that we would engage God in a really uncommon way, in an unknowing way, a way that breaks through all of the things going on in our lives, where we can find that that stillness and that, that silence. So pause this video to um, reflect on your word, to make sure you have a word, and to get into whatever space you need to, um, to pray this, to, to go to an apophatic prayer state. And when you're done, come back to this video because we're going to ask some questions. All right, go in prayer. All right, you should have come back by now. Um, you may have spent a lot of time in apophatic prayer. You may have spent five minutes and you could have hated it. <laughs> uh, I want you to reflect on your word. Why did you choose that word? Where did it come from for you? Did you find yourself getting distracted? And if so, did you feel that inner narrative telling you, oh, that's bad. Don't do that. Come on, you're not supposed to be thinking about that right now. Yeah, I, I do that. <laughs> that happened to me too. What might we learn from experiencing God in our distraction, in our non-thought, in our negative thinking, not negative with the connotation it has now of being not good, but the lack of thought, a really quiet space where we can be filled with God. Did you feel God? Did you experience God's presence in this time? If not, this is why it's a practice. Keep doing it. Try this again. Maybe every morning this week, go into um, a, a prayer time that is apophatic, where you anchor yourself to a holy word and try to think of nothing but God. Let God come into the nothingness with you. I hope that this practice is engaging to you in a, in a different way, that it stretches some different spiritual muscles than you're accustomed to. If, you're fi if you find yourself really up against this one, if you enjoyed the um, breath prayer or Lectio Divina or praying with an image or artwork, it's good to note that. And I invite you to keep practicing those as well. But don't, don't get rid of apophatic prayer just yet. 
don't throw it out just because it it isn't something you naturally cling to sometimes a spiritual practice that's challenging is really good for our soul work it gets us out of that comfort zone and maybe God reveals something to us that we have not been able to see or know and yet As we do it, we will probably continue to journey into our God that we cannot see and we cannot know. That's the mystery. That's apophatic prayer. Experiencing the mystery of God. Let me know how this practice took root in your life this week. If you liked it, if you didn't like it, what you heard, how you felt. I hope that it becomes something that fills you and restores you and challenges and stretches you too. And and keep thinking about the holy word that you chose. That'll be something to reflect on as well. Keep praying, friends. Keep opening yourself up to the Spirit. And be well. Until next time.